In this film, I'm going to be showing you a fantastic little tip that enables you to shrink a patterned wedding band, or if you want to enlarge your wedding band, whether it be plain or patterned, I'm going to show you how we can do that as well without cutting and marking the ring. My name is Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. So I said in the last film, just by here, that I was gonna show you a little tip that enables you to shrink, make smaller, a patterned wedding band. Uh, it doesn't work on a stone set wedding band, but something with some engraving, some diamond cut on it, or in this case, a two color, with a little bit of pattern on it, uh, we can shrink it. And we can shrink them if they are sort of quite highly decorative and patterned. We can't shrink them an awful lot. A size, two sizes, perhaps at the maximum three sizes if you're lucky. Especially when it comes to something like this. This is a two color. It's a 22 carat wedding band with a piece of platinum applied over the top of it. This is gonna be able to be reduced literally only about a size or two maximum. But usually that is enough. So. What you need, first of all, is uh, people sometimes will use a little bit of leather, very thin leather. I like to use um, one, <laughs> one of these selvert cloths. As you can see, I've used this quite a few times. Don't use a brand new one. Use one that's old and marked and that doesn't really clean and polish up anymore or any nice, nice thick piece of material. So first of all, what we need to do, exactly the same as what we did in the last film, is that choose a hole in the die that the, the ring just about fits in it. And don't forget, we're using <clears throat> an upright wedding ring stretcher and reducer. Described it all in the last film, just by here. So get the ring that comes along so it just fits into the die. And again, with this one, it's just coming slightly higher than the surface. Ideal, remember which one that is, put that into place. Now get your cloth, and this is the reason why the cloth is looking like it is. Put the cloth over the hole, all right? So it's a nice, fresh bit of cloth. Get the ring, put the ring on top, so the ring is pushing the cloth into the hole. And now we can just simply pull the handle down and push the ring into the die. And what the cloth is going to do, it's going to protect the surface of the ring so it doesn't get marked by the metal of the die. So it cushions it and protects it, but it's still enough pressure in there to shrink it. First of all, what I will do is actually measure this for you, just to show you that I'm not fibbing. Uh, this is coming in at a size M, M for mother, as you can see. And again, this shrinking only really works with uh, a D section, round edged rings. If they're, <coughs> me, if they're flat edged, straight edge, you're gonna get a little bit of convexing. So put it into the hole, get the plunger, and just gently push it down into the die. like that. And what happens then, you take it around, you pull out, and this is obviously what happens, is that you make a nice little hole. If it doesn't come out, ease it out. Remember what size hole that was. Turn the ring over, put that back into place, put the ring in, and do exactly the same again. So the fabric, cushions and protects the surface. That was a size M for mother. Let's put it onto here now and let's see what size we're looking at now. There we go. We've gone down to a size L. Yep, an L. It's about a K and a half on one side, an L on the other. So if you want to take it down just a little bit further, down so it matches. Obviously we have to turn the ring over to have an equal amount of pressure either size. As you can see on the band here now, it's still looking good. We've still got all the detail all around the outside. 
even on the centre band here, we've got the detail. There's a bit of cloth stuck on it. We've got all that detail showing. So we've reduced the band down a size. If I want to just even that out, uh, we were looking at a K and a half on that side. It's an L on that side. If you want to make it up to that K and a half, bring the handle back down, put the ring on the top, and just push the handle up a fraction, turn the ring round a fraction, and we can take that up to now. So when we push the ring down upon the mandrel, we've got the size L now on both sides. So we've reduced that band one size. We could do it one more size maximum on something like this. This has got a bit of a hand engraved pattern on the outside. Edge in the center has this very fine detail that you can just about see. So that's how we can reduce a patterned band, stretch it up, you just saw me do it, exactly the same. This um, stretcher here has the finger sizes for the UK. It goes from F right up to Z plus three. In your country, you'd perhaps have numbers and so forth. My actual one downstairs has numbers because it's a foreign one, but I don't rely upon these. I do never rely upon these here. I find to me, they're not that accurate. I would rather have my ring mandrel that I just simply put the ring on. And this is what I would always go by. Not that, but actually the mandrel. So we've gone down to an L, but say we want to stretch it. This is a nice 22 karat band. I'm not even going to anneal this. We can take this up to a size M, no worries at all. Again, put it onto the uh, the stretcher here, make sure the handle is down towards you. And the idea is when you push the handle, it pushes up a conical rod in the center, which forces out these four splines. Four splines, let me have a look, one, two, three, five, six. Actually, this one has six splines. There's six separate pieces that will open up. Some have four, my workshop downstairs has one with four. This has six. This will basically stretch things a lot better. The more splines it has, the more even the circle it is. So as I said, downstairs we have four splines. So what would happen is that we put the ring over the, the stretcher here, we will push the handle, it'll expand it. If it has four splines, take the ring off, rotate the ring a quarter of a turn, put the ring back down and stretch it just to even out that stretching. With this one, six sides, you're not even gonna want necessarily to turn the ring round. So put it onto the top here, comes down to an L, but I never use this gauge. Get the handle, push the handle up. You can feel a little bit of resistance. Don't go pushing it and forcing it forward and then push the handle upwards a fraction, don't go too far. You can always do this in a couple of stages rather than one go. Bring the handle back down, take the ring, turn it over, push that back down there and push it up again. And as you can see, when we slide the ring down, it goes that little bit further. Let's have a look and see what size that is now. That's an L and a half. Let's put that over the top again and we can push the handle up again, the same amount, take the ring off, turn it over, back on, exactly the same again, and we'll have a look. Virtually there. And remember, as this is conical, we do need to turn the ring over to ensure we get that even taper on both sides. Come back now and we'll have a look. And what we've got now is a ring that is a size M again. And this is the reason why we always turn the ring over is to make sure that we get that taper just right. If it isn't and it goes down further on one side, well then you can always shrink that side or enlarge the other side of the band just so that it goes down on the mandrel nice and evenly. And if there is no solder joint, in these bands, we can basically stretch these rings up an awful lot, making sure that you anneal the band at a frequent interval, perhaps every two or three sizes as you go up. 22 carat is very, very forgiving and we can stretch and reduce this to our heart's content. Always make sure that you anneal the band if it's a lower quality carat, whether you're stretching it or reducing it. So there we go. We have just shown you how that you can reduce a patterned wedding band by using 
for your bit of cloth as your bit of protection on the conical dies here and you can then also stretch the band by using this stretch part of your wedding ring stretcher and reducer and it was gonna need a very slight little bit of polish obviously to get the ring back shiny as new which is what we always do with every piece of jewelry that we repair in our workshops and we would clean the inside and then we'd also clean the outside as well with a little bit of pre-polish and then a nice bit of a rouge on the outside pop it into the ultrasonic to make sure it's lovely and clean and you can give that back to your customer knowing that your customer is going to be so, so happy that you've managed to either reduce it or stretch it without damaging the pattern. Don't forget, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Once you subscribe, smash that little bell icon to be notified when films go live on our YouTube channel. Don't forget, please give this film a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget, please share it with your friends as well. Anything else you want me to show you on our YouTube channel when it comes to tools and equipment, please let me know. Pop it down in the description down below. I read every single comment. Thank you for watching. Take care. My name is Andrew Berry for At The Benches YouTube channel. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye. We have, oh, my word, look at the moths we've got in this place. Huge. And we simply just put the ring over the, oh, what's this thing called again? <laughs> it's a wedding ring stretcher and reducer, Andrew. That's what it's called.